Okay. So here's the question for the day. Here's the question for the day. Um, best song ever recorded is what? Now, I, I, undoubtedly, I would say that it is something by Def Leppard, ZZ Top, you know, 80s rock, because that just is. But I can't decide which one. So uh, what, I did, what I did this week is I, I asked around. I took a little survey of different people to try to get some insight on what other people think is the best song ever recorded. So some of the answers I got were Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. It's a good one. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks. That one's wrong because it's a, it's a country song. Piano Man by Billy Joel, right? Yesterday by the Beatles. And even Inagata De Vida by Iron Butterfly. Are there other ones out there that are the best song ever? Freebird. Free All right. Little Leonard Skinnerd. Hotel California. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. You guys have. It's it's interesting to see the variety up here, isn't it? It's interesting to see that. And you know, it probably is not surprising when you think about that question from different people's perspectives, right? If you ask a whole bunch of different people, best song ever, you're going to get a bunch of different answers, right? And in fact, if you ask people about their favorite song, even for different activities, you might get different answers, right? I have, I have a favorite song that I use for my workouts, my, a favorite song for that. It's very different than my favorite dancing song. Or at least it would be if I had a favorite dancing song. It would be different. But it's interesting to think about how people answer the question. And, and what was really fun for me was watching people's faces light up when they start to think about their favorite song ever, the best song ever. You know, music has a powerful place in people's lives, right? Music is really important to us. If you, if you ask teenagers, when they're in a funk, what is it that brings them out of that? When they're not doing well, what brings them out? Inevitably, they will talk about music. And I think a lot of us can relate to that, right? We can relate to that. A lot of us, we can think of songs that have transported us back to a childhood memory. Right? We can think of songs that have calmed us when we're angry or when we're stressed. Or we can think of songs that have spoken to us in the midst of a crisis. I, I, remember, I remember one time I was sitting in my car and I, was just, I hit this moment where I was just really low. You know, you guys, I know you know what I'm talking about. You guys have had these. But it felt like everything was going wrong at the time. And I'm just sitting there in my car just trying to think, what do I do? What do I do? And the song came on that spoke exactly to me. And I was sure at that moment, and I'm still sure today, that God played that song exactly for me. But music has the power to do that, right? Music has the power to bring healing to us. Music is a powerful vehicle for expression and for distraction sometimes. And music is a, is a powerful vehicle, even just for entertainment. But you know what? Music is also a powerful vehicle for worship. We, we talked about worship right before Easter a few weeks ago. And we talked a lot about what worship is and, and who it's for and how it affects us. And we just mentioned briefly music in that, but we didn't spend a lot of time on music. But I mean, if we're being honest, Music plays a really significant part in our worship experience week in and week out, doesn't it? Music is a huge part of this. Now, if, if I were to try to think of my favorite song that we sing in church, I would have a really hard time with this. I really would. It'd be hard for me to put my finger on it because there are so many songs that we do that have become deeply meaningful to me. I think of... I think of Precious Lord, Take My Hand. I think of Days of Elijah. I love that song. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Blessed be your name. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I love victory in Jesus. 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I love them all. How do I pick out a favorite one? 
they're also fantastic. And I realized that music has the ability to not only affect your mood, but music can affect your spirit. You know, music seems to have this special ability to bring us into the presence of God in a way that is different, even than reading scripture or fellowshipping with other believers or serving others. And those are all important aspects of our faith, right? All of those are ways that we, that we move into the presence of God. But if you take music out of that, it's like you've removed a piece of the puzzle that brings the whole story together, right? Music is so powerful. When, when you look in the Psalms in the Bible, what you see is that many, many of the Psalms are intended to be set to music. A lot of them are intended to be sung. And if you look at the footnotes in some of your Psalms, you could do this later, you look in the footnotes, you'll see that some of them have a little footnote that says, sing to the tune of dot, dot, dot. For instance, Psalm 60, if you look that one up, it says, sing to the tune of Lily of the Testimony. Do you guys know that song? Me either. I don't know what that song is. But it just shows how powerful music was even thousands of years ago in worship. You know, music has been instrumental, not just today, but forever when it comes to music. And we see that as a meaningful part of our worship. Several of the Psalms talk about singing. And they talk about instruments as well. So I want you to listen to this one. This is so cool. This is Psalm, the last Psalm, 150. And it goes like this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. You kind of picking up a theme going on here. Praise, praise. Listen to this part. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. If you look in some translations, it says praise him with the trumpet blast. <laughs> praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great? I love that song. Isn't that awesome though? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with horns. Praise the Lord with strings. Praise the Lord with percussion. Praise the Lord with woodwinds. Praise the Lord with every instrument you got. Isn't that cool? I just think it's neat how God wants all these instruments to be used in his praise. So here's my question. What does this say to someone like me who doesn't play an instrument? I don't play. You know what I think? It, says, it still says two things, right? My voice is an instrument. And it tells me to sing. And I can do that, right? I can sing to praise God. It also says to dance. My body can be an instrument of praise. And you guys see me up here dancing, do you not? I try to be authentic to scripture. I'm trying to live out scripture. So I think it tells us, use the instrument you have to praise the Lord. But I think the other thing it tells us here is appreciate how all the different instruments are used together to praise God. God wants every instrument to be used in his praise. And I can develop an appreciation for that. Now, you, you guys are probably aware that we have different musical styles that we use in our worship here. You know, we sing different, different types of song, different styles of song, and we use different instruments in our praise, right? We use the organ, and we use the keyboard, and we use drums and guitar and bass, and, and we use the piano. And sometimes we use horns, and sometimes we use the marimba, and sometimes we use flutes. And it's so cool to have that variety, right? Knowing, recognizing that all music is loved by God. All instruments are loved by God when they're used to praise him. I think it's valuable for us to get an appreciation for the different styles of music that we use. So over the next few weeks, what I want to do is look at some of the songs that we sing in church. I want to look at these songs, and I want to look at why we sing these songs, and what are they singing to God. And even if some of these songs may be unfamiliar to you, even if these songs aren't on your favorite list, my hope is that we can develop an appreciation for the different styles of music that we use. So in the late 1990s, there was a, a pastor named Mike Pilavachi. 
And Mike Pilavachi pastored a church in England. And he was, he hit this point in, in the 90s, late 90s, 1997, when he was really kind of frustrated in his spirit. And he was frustrated that, that, that the church, he felt his church was just going through the motions without a real sense of mission, without a sense of authenticity. And he didn't know what to do about it. So he prayed about it. And so one day he did something that was pretty radical. He took all of the instruments out of the church. He took the whole sound system out of the church. And he told the church, he said, we're going to sing a cappella for a while. Because he wanted the church, he wanted the people to focus on the words that they were singing. He wanted to focus on the words and what they said and what they meant about faith and what they said about, about Jesus and about prayer. The lead musician of the church at that time was a guy named Matt Redman. And Matt Redman used that experience to write a song called The Heart of Worship. And when Matt Redman was talking about that pastor and what he did, he said this. He said his point was that we lost our way in worship. And the way to get back to the heart would be to strip everything away. Interesting, isn't it? The way to get back to the heart would be to strip everything away. And so Redmond sat down and he wrote, he wrote these words. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? To to strip away everything in life to get to what is most important. Isn't it? To kind of strip everything away to focus on what is most important. The book of Hebrews tells us, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with, with endurance the race that God has set before us. Hebrews is, is, is telling us to strip away everything that can slow us down, right? Everything that can get in the way of your devotion to Jesus Christ is what it's telling us to do. Interestingly, it's exactly what that song is talking about too. Stripping everything else away so that we can focus on Jesus. When, when Matt Redman writes, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. What is he talking about? You know, what, what is it that we sometimes make worship into? Or even our devotion to God, what do we make it into? We make it into something that's about us, right? We make it a show or a performance or a program that's about, that's about us. And he says, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it. When it's all about you, it's supposed to be about you. It's really about you, Jesus. So when I, when I sing these songs, what, what I do is I think about this, I think about it for myself, right? And I try to personalize it because, because when, I, when I sing a song, I want to mean it. I want to mean the song, even, even if it's a song that I'm not super familiar with or even if it's a song that's not on my favorite list. I want to mean what I'm singing. And so when I, when I think about the heart of worship, I think about this song, I think there's two questions that come out of, that, out of this for me. And the first question is, what do I need to strip away to become more devoted to my Lord Jesus? What, what do I need to remove in order to be more devoted, right? Paul, in the Bible, Paul says that we shouldn't become too attached to the things of this world because the world as we know it is passing away. These things that we see are all passing away, right? So if I wanted to renew my commitment to Jesus as Lord in my life, I wanted to renew that. Make sure that my worship is not half-hearted, to make sure that my commitment is not half-hearted. What would I need to remove to make sure that I'm focused on the most important thing? What are the things that are maybe getting in my way? 
Am I too, am I too into, into sports? Am I too into video games? Are there, are there friendships or are there relationships that are maybe unhealthy, that are conflicting with my commitment to Christ? Am I too involved in stuff? Am I too busy? Even if it's good stuff, if I'm so busy that it's sapping all of my energy and all of my time, then it's conflicting with my commitment to Christ. Now, I mean, you know, you guys know, right? It's, this is a different answer for different people, right? This is going to change. So it becomes, it becomes an intensely personal question. What needs to be removed in your life for God to shine more brightly? The second question is, when I worship, when I worship, or when I serve God, what, am I, what do I bring with me to God? What am I bringing to God? Because you look at that song, and, and Matt Redman says, I want to bring something that is of worth, that can bless your heart. And I think what he's saying in there, he recognizes that God wants more than just a song that we sing, right? He wants more than just a song. What am I bringing to God? The second, verse, the second verse of the song says, King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath. Then he sings again, I'll bring you more than a song. But I love this sentiment. I really do. Everything I have belongs to God, right? And I think I know this, I know this, that my breath comes from him. It belongs to him. My life belongs to him. My gifts, my skills, it all belongs to him. But when I'm thinking about this, can I say this personally? Can I really say this personally? Do I get this about myself? Do I offer myself to God? Do I, do I understand that my life is less about it's less about me, and it's more about Jesus living in me. Because I'll tell you, above anything else, that's what your God wants. That's what he wants more than anything else. He, he, he wants your worship. He wants your worship. He wants your song. He wants your love. He wants your smile. He wants your joy. Above anything else, he wants you. He just wants you. And he wants you as you are right now. Whether you're weak or poor or rich or strong or you have it all together or you're falling apart, he just wants you and he wants all of you. And he wants that more than anything else. Your devotion is the most important thing that you can bring to God. Your submission to Christ is the most important thing that you can bring to God. Because the most valuable thing that you have. So in just a minute, we're going we're gonna to sing this song that Matt Redman wrote to celebrate the heart of worship. And my, my hope is that, is that even though you, you in this service here have sung this song a number of times before, I really hope that the words sound different today. You know, that the words can ring true to you. And that you can own the song, that you can mean the song. And that through the song, you can kind of wrestle with what maybe you need to set aside, you need to strip away to draw nearer to the God who adores you. And maybe even consider offering yourself to the one who died so that you could live. It's a big commitment. It really is. To submit to Christ is a big thing. And if, as always, if you, need, if you need help with that kind of decision or what that kind of commitment means, come and talk to me. I'm, I'm always available to talk about this. So here's to music, right? Here's to music. It's ability to motivate us and inspire us and calm us and cheer us and its ability to lead us into the presence of God. You guys, whether a song is, is on your favorite list or not, it can still tell a story that relates to you. It can still be your song. Let's pray together. Father God, we want to thank you for just this reminder that there are so many things that can get in the way of your place in our lives. And sometimes we put those things in the way. And so sometimes we need, we need to strip away the instruments and we strip away the sound system. We strip away the expectations and we strip away what we're used to. And we focus just on you. We pray, Lord, that, that as we sing this song, that would be true for us today that we would get to the heart of worship and we would recognize that it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And so we pray this 
And we sing this 